Right, so today I thought I'd revisit uh, a little gem of mine on this channel. So I don't know if you know, but a few years ago, I reacted to a video from a channel called Howcast, which is basically like a uh, instructional video sort of uh, sort of channel. Um, unfortunately, the video I watched was neither instructional nor helpful. It was called How to Have Sex in the Office. A very very worthy title that I'm sure you agree. So, I'm going to revisit Howcast today, and I'm going to see what they've been up to, or what they have been up to, in the past few years, so it should be interesting. So, we're going to go to their channel now and see what it's like. So, here we are on the Howcast channel, and uh, it looks like, you know, a very fairly normal sort of channel. You know, you've got uh, preventing diet, uh, forget forgetfulness, whatever that is. How to deal with an annoying younger sibling. I've just realised all of it, all of these look like stock pictures. This guy here, he is not happy. Even the video is stock. Oh my god. This is the definition of look, bro fell off. If you go to their most popular videos, you'll see what I mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How to undo her bra with one hand. This is their most popular video. It's got 248 million views, as well as how to have better sex. <laughs> how to spoon. How to get someone to kiss you. You just don't do that. You don't do that. What the hell is this? What is that? How to make a dissolving bikini as a prank. A prank, but... How to fake an orgasm. How to type. How to doogie. Why are they doing it in the middle of the road? What if a car comes and just kills... Kills them both. I have to tell your boyfriend he's a bad kisser. Bad as in he's rubbish at what he's doing, or he's bad as in like he's a very bad boy. How to have sex in the car. That's the video title. So I think we're gonna watch some of these. We're gonna watch some of these and see if they're as, as, as promising as the titles assume. I guarantee you they're not though. I think we're gonna see how to have sex in a car. Not what I'm looking for. Uh, but frankly, oh shit. Man, doesn't it suck being 17 years old, nearly 18, and using YouTube? Maybe we should try and find one that isn't as sexually expletive as, as, as the previous one. How are 14 year olds able to view how to have sex in a car and I'm not? How to set up a router. It's like using talk talk all over again, but like what my family does. How to make meatballs. Those are not meatballs, those are just... Turds. You've how to kiss like Angelina Jolie. What will you need? I'll need uh, an Angelina Jolie. You know, screw it. We'll, we'll watch How to Survive a Plane Crash. It seems like the most helpful tutorial. Oh no, leave me alone. It's 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 really telling this, isn't it? My computer's really slow, I am so sorry about this, this is so shit. Right, sorry about that, I had to fix a couple things there. Uh, but we fixed it. Take a look at this. Yes, I've downloaded a selection of videos, and we're gonna watch them together. How to survive a plane crash. The most normal out of all of these, surprisingly. And as a result, that is the one we are going to watch first. How to survive an airplane crash. In the unlikely event you're ever in a plane crash, these tips will dramatically improve your odds of walking away from it alive. The first step is be animated, apparently. This plane is not real. This, none of this is real. This, this, none of this is real. I don't get it. Why couldn't Halcast go out and, you know, actually film a plane crash? Surely they could hire, like, I don't know, Michael Bay or something. You will need an aisle seat or one close to it. Oh. Well, people are unlucky, are screwed then. Long sleeve pants and top, and- Well, I'm pretty sure everyone will have proper clothing on an airplane, considering, um, homeless people can possibly go on an airplane. And a smoke hood or a wet washcloth. Do they even allow that at the airport terminals? Proper clothing? Of course. I'll see. You don't pack it yourself, do you? You, you get an I'll see if you're lucky. Um, and a smoke hood or wet washcloth. Do they allow that at the airport terminal? I don't know. I don't know. Step one. Book a seat in the exit row, or within five rows of it. People in those seats have the highest survival rates. What about everyone else, then? You would have to book this in advance. 
knowing that the plane was going to crash. Step two, wear pants and a long sleeve shirt made of non-flammable material. I, I don't have a long sleeve shirt, but I do have trousers. So, I'm going to die, but my legs will be fine. Clothes that don't restrict movement, but also offer some protection from flames, flying debris, and the elements. Is this supposed to be me? Why is it, why were his arms so, so blocky? <laughs> Look at this. He's not moving, he's just sort of standing there. Normally in this situation you'd be flailing, possibly holding on for your life. This guy, this guy's fine. He just has to do this. That is not how you survive a plane crash. I'm just saying, that is not how you survive a plane crash. Bring a smoke hood, or even just a wet washcloth sealed in a plastic bag. Yeah, you said that, but how am I going to get that? Where do I get it from? The US military? Step 4. Once aboard, count the seats between you and the nearest front and rear emergency exit. You want to be able to feel your way should the cabin fill with smoke. Hmm... I don't get it. This guy looks like Conan O'Brien. Step 5. When instructed, brace yourself for an emergency landing. With your feet on the floor, cross your arms on the seat in front of you. Oh, don't the flight attendants say this in advance? Like, before the plane takes off, why am I being stupid? Why do we need a tutorial? Huh? Why do we need a tutorial telling us how to survive a plane crash? Do we just watch this after the plane crash, or do we watch this before the plane crash? You never know if a plane crash is going to happen. If there is no seat in front, hug your knees. If there's no seat in front of you, look depressed. Look like you're about to kill yourself. Remove any sharp objects from your shirt and pants. If you wear glasses, take them off. So you're just going to be blind as a bat, and you won't be able to see. So when you survive the plane, your glasses are going to fall out of your hand. When the plane crashes, your, pla your glasses are going to fall out of your hands, and you won't be able to see. So congratulations. I'm, I'm holding the mic. I can't, I can't, I can't clap, but I would if I could. Step six. It may sound stupid, but remind yourself that airplane seat belts open by lifting a buckle, not pushing a button. Ugh. See, I wouldn't know that because, believe it or not, I've never flown in a plane, nor have I ever left the UK. So, I hope you can understand why this tutorial might be important to me, even though I literally just said that uh, the tutorial was useless a few minutes, a few seconds ago, but whatever. Step seven. If the cabin fills with smoke, forget what you learned about staying close to the floor in a- What are they doing? They look- they look like they're trying to do like a Michael Jackson dance or something. Look at them. I could just-, just... Exit the plane immediately and find your loved ones outside. Yeah, but where are you? That's the thing I'm concerned about. We could have crash landed in Portugal and that would have been an absolute suicide rate. Um, for me. Step 8. Once off the plane, run for your life. Yes, kids. Once the plane crashes and you're out of the plane, run. Fucking run. Don't stop running. Run until you've reached Gibraltar. Did you know, research shows that passengers who sit near the back of the plane are 40% more likely to survive a crash than those in the first few rows. No. Shit. Well, that tutorial was absolutely wonderful. And now we move on to the sex videos. I really hope this doesn't get me copyrighted or age restricted or whatever. So I might as well play it safe and start with how to have sex in a car. How to have sex in a car. Since it arrived in the 20th century, the automobile has provided an alternative place for sexual congress. Says who? Who's actually attracted by a car? I mean, some people love cars, but sexually attracted to them? I wouldn't. I could never. Our simple instructions for heterosexual two-person sex in a car. You will need a car. That's right, kids. To have sex in a car, you'll need a car. Step one. Be sure that the seats and floors of the vehicle are relatively clean. The mood can be dampened by rotting food and other debris being jostled during the act. Surely people who want to have sex in a car would have nice looking cars. Unless, of course, the parents don't like them and don't want them having sex in their house. You know what, whatever. I shouldn't be breaking down the law of this. Is While some people burn candles to heighten the romance, it is not recommended. No shit, you're gonna burn your car down with two sodding candles. Step two. Park your vehicle in a safe, level, legal, and secluded area. What she actually means is don't park your vehicle in the middle of Bristol 
because some people might see it, especially on a Sunday afternoon. The legality of the parking spot is especially important as an interruption by police could derail your plans. It's not like the police officer is going to come up to you and go, Oh dear, you seem to be having sex in a car. Can I see your driver's license, please? And the guy was like, uh, it's in my trouser pocket and I'm not wearing my trousers right now because I'm currently doing it. Um, and the officer says, Oh, fair enough. Have a nice night, sir. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Step four, decide whether to have sex in the front passenger seat or in the rear. Why would you have sex in the front passenger seat? Why? I don't, that wouldn't, that doesn't make any sense. If you want privacy, go to the back at least, get some covers for the window for fuck's sake. The driver's seat isn't ideal because of the steering wheel. The back seat affords the most room, but it's less spontaneous and one is more vulnerable if interrupted. Uh, the sexual acts are really getting to me now, it's horrible. If your vehicle has fully adjustable seats, lower the front passenger seat to horizontal. And if they don't, well, it's tough luck, I'm afraid. Step five, remove the necessary clothing and place it in an empty seat or footwell, preferably one you won't be using. If you and your partner each claim one area, finding and sorting clothing after sex will be easy. So basically, turn your front two seats into a closet, except, you're not storing your clothes there, you're just temporarily putting them there whilst you pump in the back of your car. Your family's sedan or something. Step six. Assume your positions. Power Rangers, go. Power Rangers. Power Fusters. Oh, no, I've ruined it now. I've Exercise caution when climbing over the gear shift. <laughs> what the fuck? Exercise caution when climbing over the gear shift. What, in case it slips inside of you? Sorry, I can't. If this is cracking me up. <laughs> Step seven. Have sex. It took it, it took it took seven steps, but we finally having sex in the car. And then seven seconds later, the police pull up and realize that you've been convicted of several felonies and are wanted in several states. Sexy time over. Step eight. Get dressed and drive your date home. I don't get it. Step seven was literally have sex. That's all it was. And then, and then step eight is just drive your date home. I'm sure she had a wonderful time. We don't need additional information. That's all we need to know. Now I think we're just gonna... I don't know if, whether this one's a bit too risque. Um, so we're gonna do this one. How to handle walking in on your parents having sex. How to handle walking in on your parents having sex. You just witnessed something no one should ever see. Your parents going at it like rabbits. They, they don't look like my parents. They're just look like parodies of people from sitcoms on a very crappy late 80s sketch show. Who is he? He looks like, he looks like fucking, he looks like fucking Jason Bourne. Coming in with his fucking glasses on, that leather jacket. What's he been up to? He... <laughs> I don't get it. He looks like he's just returned home from a top secret mission in Milan or something. The fuck is he doing here and why is he witnessing his parents pumping on the kitchen table? If you ever want to look them in the eye again, here's what to do. You only need one step for this. Run. Just like when the plane exploded, just run. It's not worth it. You need a quick getaway, willful ignorance, and perspective. All of those things are psychological and a quick getaway. Step one, run the other way as fast as you can. That should be the only step. Run away and don't talk to your parents for about two hours, I'd say. Terrifying images like seeing your parents having sex provoke the fight or flight response and no good will come of you choosing the former. Where the hell does he live? <laughs> this looks like, this looks like urban Canada. What the hell? Step two. Make yourself scarce for the next several hours. Otherwise, you may be forced to endure an excruciating talk about what just happened. Just think about your life choices. Look, look, he looks genuinely depressed. You know why? You know why? Because his parents have been watching Howl Caster Toys. That's right. Look at him. He's, he's so annoyed. <laughs> he looks so down. Step three. Time your return so you won't have to face both parents at once. He looks like a prick. He looks like the sort of guy who'd kill you for no reason. You know, he reminds me of my, he reminds me of my drug dealer. Listen to music with headphones to discourage discourse. Is that on your own or what? Step four, act like nothing happened and hope to God your parents follow your lead. 
No, no can do, I'm afraid. The image is ingrained in your head. That's not going to come out for at least a few years to come, man. It's... It's bad. It's really bad. If they start to say something, anything, about having sex, put your fingers in your ears and scream la 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 until their lips stop moving. Christ, he looks like he's about to die. The parents hold up a f***ing banana. He's got uh, nah, 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 nah. What is, you have a f***ing annoying orange or something. Employ this childish maneuver no matter how old you are. Step 5. Now grow up a little and be grateful your parents are still having sex. <laughs> That's right, kids. Um, once you've done, once you're done being childish and saying la, 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 la. You can then grow up, be a man, and accept that your parents may or may not have sex Not only does it indicate that they still love each other It bodes well for you having the desire and stamina when you reach their age So this story is essentially saying Because your parents are having sex be glad that they're having sex and that you could one day attain their level of authority. Did you know, 73% of men polled would rather have their parents walk in on them having sex than vice versa. No, no one should walk in on anyone doing anything. <laughs> having sex, jerking off, all that sort of stuff. Well kids, I hope you're learning stuff so far because um, we're going to now learn how to act if a dog is, dog if, is humping your leg. I think that's the most important tutorial, I think. How to act if a dog is humping your leg. This is animated. This is this is gonna be animated, isn't it? Everyone loves a party until the host's pooch starts giving your leg a little bit of his doggy stuff. <laughs> they just they put the dog on its side and just made it go. Uh, 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 uh. The dog just comes up to you. Hello, dog. Oh shit! Show that canine he's not humping any old bitch. <laughs> His poor face, he's so distressed, he does not want this dog fucking his leg. You'll need calm nerves, quick wits, snack food, and wet naps. You'll need to insult the dog, tell it it's a naughty dog for fucking my leg, lure away with food into a trap, and calm its nerves so it, it sleeps forever. Basically, kill the dog. Step one, stay calm. In addition to your apparently enthralling scent, fear can be sniffed out by dogs. His face, <laughs> he looks less calm and looks like he's enjoying it. <laughs> his hair's so fucked up as well, what's going on with that? It's like someone's shit in his hair or something, what the hell is that? And why is his t-shirt so ugly and green? Step two. Drag yourself and your frisky friend over to the buffet table and discreetly offer him a tasty treat in exchange exchange for a dismount. None of the other party attendants give two shades of shit that a dog is humping this man's leg. Who lets a dog into a party and let it start fucking someone's leg? Go for a meaty snack. He probably won't let go of your leg for a celery stick. You have to emphasize meaty snack. You know what I mean? Get a meaty snack in ya. No, I'll give him a meaty snack, but not because you told me to, because dogs love Meat. Step three. If you don't have a snack, try throwing an imaginary ball across the room. Dogs are becoming more smart. So they won't fool the back. So realize there's nothing in your hand, you're throwing nothing. Well they're gonna think you're just throwing up some fucking sparkles or particles or the new invisible dog bone invented by fucking whiskers or something. Step four. If none of your tricks have worked, it's time to get others involved. I don't get- this dog can fuck. This dog can literally fuck. I don't get it. Like, this dog doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit. His tongue is out. He's not gonna stop no matter what. Attention to your predicament with a joke. Just be cool about it. Your host will be embarrassed enough without you piling on. Try this one. Whoa, easy there, Fido. <laughs> That's not a milk bone in my pocket. That is such a shit line. It is both a shit line to get your dog to stop humping you, and a shit pickup line to dogs in general. What the fuck is a milk bone? That sounds like a rock band invented by people who love sucking breasts or something. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad one for me. I'm sorry about that. Step five. At this point, if the mud has not been removed, all bets are off. You are well within your rights to howl at your host. Feel free to use profanity. Be f free to say, GET THIS F***ING DOG OFF ME! NOW! I'm so sick of this f***ing dog f my leg! It's f***ing pissing me off! F***ing... F***ing... This 
pissing me off. Fucking dog. I'm gonna punch you, I swear to God. I should emphasize, don't punch dogs, even if they're humping your leg. That was all just a joke. That was all exaggeration. You can, you can swear at your host if you want, just don't use ats or hashtags or stars or whatever that fucking thing is. I can never tell what that is. Step six. If the dog's owner is uncooperative, you just may have to weather the storm. Yeah, let it, let it hump your leg. Just, just let it, just let it be. No one else gives a shit. It's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen? Is your leg gonna give birth to puppies or something? That's not, that's not, that's not add bestiality to this, this shitty joke pile. Who knows? Maybe you'll get a new best friend out of the deal. Uh, no, now the video's implying bestiality. I'm not dealing with shit. I'm, I'm getting off. I'm getting off, actually. Did you know? Neutered and female dogs sometimes hump legs as an act of dominance, not sex. Dogs are gonna kill us all, actually. This is their way of trying to assert dominance by humping legs. A theory is that's so bad, it's actually amazing. We're now gonna watch um, how to make a dissolving bikini as a prank. A shit prank that no one should ever do, so don't follow this tutorial at all. How to make a dissolving bikini. Someone pull a fast one on you, make them squirm, and get your revenge with this sneaky prank. Someone draws loser on your head. What's the first thing you do? Oh, I know. I'm going to make it so that when they get in the pool, they're nudity. They're naked. I said nudity. That was shit. You'll need a bikini, water-soluble thread, sewing scissors, a needle, a place to swim, a partner with a sense of humor, a replacement bikini, and a peace offering. To get your revenge, you really need a lot of items. This seems like a lot just to try and get back at someone who's just written on your forehead. Just wipe it off. And this is permanent marker. You can wipe that shit off. It's like fucking... It's, what is it? Marker pen or something. A whiteboard pen or something. Why do you need to make their life hell? Step one, acquire your target's bikini as stealthily as possible, or buy one to secretly modify and give as a gift. So first step, steal their bikini. Steal their clothing. Make it so their bikini's fucked for, for life. Step two, use sewing scissors to gently remove the existing thread from the seam at the crotch and the seams on both sides of the bottom piece. I do not have the time, nor the energy, nor the willpower to go through any of this. If someone, if, if, if someone, even a girl, alright, writes on my forehead, I'm not gonna do this shit. This is just a waste of time, frankly. Why is Howcast making this tutorial? This is not a life hack. Look at this, this woman's so determined to try and get back at her friend. It's, it's actually pissing me off. Three, take apart the seams between the top of the cups and the shoulder or neck straps. If possible, take apart the seams between the cups as well as the ones connecting them to the back strap. I didn't even understand any of that. Like, I'm not a sewing expert. This tutorial is clearly aimed at women. Step four, sew each of the seams back together with water-soluble thread. Why did she look so evil then? Look, look at her face. It's so evil. Mm, I'm gonna fucking get back on that bitch. <laughs> Water soluble thread is safe to use in a sewing machine. Thanks for letting me know. I don't care. Step six. Go for a swim. Oh god. Oh no. This is this is the part we've all been waiting for. Um, anyone watching who gives a shit? Why are there Why are there cars? Why are there trucks on this beach? Unless that's a parking space. That's a shit parking space. It's cloudy. It's a cloud. It's cloudy as shit. The sun's still shining. I don't. I don't know what's up with you Americans. I swear to God. Private location, unless you want to be in the doghouse forever, and make sure your target's bikini stays submerged for several minutes. Oh yeah, make sure it's submerged for several minutes. So this is even an instant thing. It's just gonna happen slowly. <sighs> this prank's gonna go shit. You're gonna be laughed at because your prank doesn't work, and then you realize you used actual thread instead of water soluble thread, and the prank has failed. Seven. Sit back and enjoy the show. What the hell? This is such a dick thing to do. Look at this shit. <laughs> look at that girl. <laughs> Why does he look like Will Ferrell? Consider bringing an extra bikini and a peace offering to redeem yourself after this sexy swimsuit shenanigan. Did, did... Did she just say sexy swimsuit? 
shenanigans. Did you know the bikini is named after the Bikini Atoll, a testing site for atomic bombs, implying the garment is as explosive as the bomb. A bikini is about as protective of your body as Oppenheimer's first attempt at the attempted bomb the Japanese. How did we go from sexy swimsuit shenanigans to f***ing the bikini was named after f***ing an atomic test site? So anyway, that's a good handful of Howcast tutorials. Not really tutorials in the same sense of actually being tutorials, more or less just attempts to try and ruin your life, if anything. I did, I did have another one actually, how to have sex in public places, but at this point, you get the idea. They're all just random tutorials about trying, trying to uh, stop things from happening, uh, or they're just sex advice really. Which makes me wonder why they didn't call it sex casts instead of how casts. So, so it was interesting to revisit this. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember it. Um, uh, my first tutorial. Not tutorial. <laughs> Jesus. The first video I made was on how to have sex in the office and not get caught. Yeah, that's how cast. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Though um, I've got nothing else to say, frankly. Um, subscribe, I guess. I don't know. Um, so that's about it. See ya.